Hi, I was gonna make a different video, but then I thought to myself, microwaves. You need to know how microwaves work. Oh, See, a microwave outputs very high power, high frequency electromagnetic waves inside the oven cavity, injected right from here. This channel is a waveguide, which is responsible to guide the waves inside the oven cavity, and hence the name waveguide. Basically, it guides the waves. Most things, like food, have polar molecules, which is kind of like this magnet, except that the polar molecules have electric polarity, like water molecules. Now if I bring another magnet close by, you see that the changing field makes my polar molecule move. See, the water is boiling. Now the electromagnetic waves also keep oscillating in a microwave. So if there are polar molecules, like water, existing in the chamber, those waves make the molecules switch direction very fast. The friction between the molecules increase the thermal energy and the food heats up. So the first question that naturally comes to mind is that if I leave an LED in the microwave, would it turn on? I mean, there's a lot of energy in there, so it's bound to turn on. I'm going to put a white LED in the microwave and see if it turns on under the energy of the microwave. There. Oh, sh oh no. My LED is burning. <laughs> I suppose that's not how an LED should turn on. And that's why you shouldn't even put the smallest bit of metal in the microwave. Well, I was hoping to pour a bucket of LEDs in the microwave and see how the areas with the higher energy are lit brighter. See, the waves coming out of the waveguide continuously reflect from the metal walls, creating standing waves. This means there are energy peaks and valleys in the 3D space in the chamber. There should be another way to see them. I have a cardboard box I place in here and heat it up for 20 to 30 seconds and then look at it with my thermal camera to see how it looks like. There. Oh, and staples. Make sure there is no metal in whatever you put in the microwave. Let's try again. Wow, look at this! This heat pattern gives you a very good idea of the electromagnetic waves inside the chamber. Now if I just measure the peaks between two closest hotspots, it would be half the wavelength of the waves in the chamber, which is around 6.3 centimeters. So a full wavelength is 12.6 centimeters. Knowing the microwave frequency is 2.45 GHz by design, we can calculate the speed of light in which the waves travel at to be around 308 million meters per second, which is pretty close to the actual speed of light around 300 million meters per second. Man, this SEEK thermal camera is pretty useful. In fact, I'll give away two of these to my patrons at the end of the video. Looking at the wave patterns, you can understand why the oven has a rotating plate. This makes sure the food is heated more evenly. Let's try again with rotation. There. Well, still some large areas are not heated as well as the others. So you better mix the food halfway and reheat. Now not everybody has a thermal camera. But I figured a different way. You know these pens that have erasers? The way the eraser works is by heating up the ink and the ink goes invisible. I take a piece of paper and completely cover it in this ink. This is gonna take forever. Let's just cut the container. Well, it wasn't enough to cover the whole page, but let's give it a try. Now we just leave it in there, in some mid-height of the microwave, and let it heat up for 20 seconds. There, you see that the ink has been hot in three spots, and the distance between the closest hot spots is somewhere around 6.2, 6.3 centimeters, which is consistent with the half wavelength of the microwave. I've got a broken microwave from my friend, which I like to further open up and see how it works. Let's see what's broken in there. Oh, this sounds terrible. Yeah. 
Whatever, let's open it up. I have it open. The system is pretty straightforward. You can see that the AC line enters from that corner and feeds it. <laughs> Always make sure your circuit is disconnected from power supply before you start tinkering with it. Same as you have to make sure your patient is under anesthesia before you cut them open. Anyway, all those microwave powers are generated from this, which is called a Megatron. Oh no, sorry, uh, this is a transformer. This is called a magnetron. It is a device built upon the dark arts of electronics. It is basically a high power oscillator resonating at 2.45 GHz when you apply a very high voltage to it. And it outputs those waves through the waveguide into the chamber, which is placed on the top in this one. If you'd like to know more about the Megatron... Transformer! Damn it! I mean the magnetron. I suggest you watch the video of the engineer guy from the link in my description. The high voltage to the magnetron comes from this huge transformer. This baby takes the 120 volt AC and increases it upwards of 2000 volts and feeds it to the magnetron which resonates and outputs high power waves and those waves shake the polar molecules generating much heat. And this is a fan. In any case, there are a lot of things I can scavenge from this oven. This huge transformer, the magnetron, the motor... Well, that's pretty much it. The rest goes into the junkyard. But first, let's unplug this transformer and power the oven and see what happens. Apparently, the output of the transformer is between the secondary and the body of the microwave. I just put a wire in here to kickstart the arc. Holy sh well, that was dangerous. See, the output voltage of the transformer is not high enough to jump across this gap. That's why I put a thin wire to close the gap a lot and create a channel for the arc. As soon as you have that channel, it can extend over a larger gap if there is enough power available. And that voltage can fry you in a microsecond, so don't try this at home. While researching on microwaves in the web, I realized there is this extra component in their drawings called a stirrer. It's pretty much a fan with metal blades rotating right in front of the waveguide and is like a bunch of moving mirrors that reflects the waves in all these different directions. It tries to make sure that there are no fixed standing waves or hot and cold spots in the chamber, unlike what we saw from my thermal imaging. It keeps moving those hot spots around, resulting in a more uniform heating of the food. Well, obviously, as you saw from my thermal image, my oven doesn't have it, or this one. I'm pretty sure I've never seen that before, although it sounds like a good idea. It would be good to know if your ovens have it. So when you have it on, look directly into the waveguide and see if there is any metal blade. I'm obviously joking about looking directly into the waveguide. Don't do it or you'll have mashed potato for brain. I'm nervous now. What if somebody paused the video before I said it was a joke to go look inside their waveguide while it's running? On the bright side, it could help make the future generations smarter by natural selection. This transformer is pretty much the entire weight of the oven and is my new pride and joy. And I don't quite know what I can do with the magnetron beside causing cancer. And I have a strange looking AC motor. Give away time! Do you like to know who's the hottest among your friends? Well, the sick thermal camera can't help you with that, but considering I'm reaching 1 million subscribers, it must be me. The SIG thermal camera is an awesome tool for troubleshooting and research, so I pass two of them to my beloved patrons at patreon.com. Also I leave a link to the products in my video description. Patrons man, they are making my channel happen, so خیلی ممنون, which in English means much thank. But man, I'm reaching 1 million subscribers any time now. Hmm? What the? There, back on the path to glory, anytime now. Please subscribe to my channel and do the bell to receive notifications. What else? Drop a like? And I still need to figure out what to do to celebrate the 1 million subs. So leave a suggestion below while you're at it. Thanks.